Super Sonic, one of the coolest characters from the Sonic franchise, right next to Sonic. This all-powerful being can do it all, can run fast as hell, has invincibility, mostly, and it's just fun to tear stages apart with him. Whether it's him or their rare Super Knuckles or Super Tails, the Super Transformation is always a treat. But not one you get for free. Unlike today, where you actually need to download the Super Transformation as a DLC, come on guys. The way to gain access to this transformation is to complete one of the many special stages. Now, special stages are extra areas in Sonic games that, more often than not, will reward you with a Chaos Emerald upon completion. Since there's seven emeralds, f you Sonic Fighters, there's only seven special stages. While not necessary for the completion of the game, they're often necessary for the true ending. If you beat a game without them, you might get your ass teased by Robotnik juggling them around. These stages range from okay to Jesus Christ. So guess what? We're going to take a look at all of them. Because by God, someone has to. These stages were introduced in the first game, Sonic 1. This one has a simple enough way to access them. Just get 50 rings before reaching the goalpost, jump on the giant ring, and off you go to hell. I'm gonna be honest, these stages kinda scared me as a kid. I mentioned before how the stage has this visual dreamlike aura around it that gets multiplied by 10 by this real music. Everything mixed together feels like something out of Nights into Dreams. It's just so trippy. The objective is to find the emerald around this colorful labyrinth while the entire world rotates around you. There are bumpers, switches that make you rotate faster or slower, and red goal orbs that take you back to the main game upon touching them. There's also these diamond bits that change color when you collide with them. Touch them enough time and they'll disappear. These are normally found around the emerald, making it a bit more of a challenge for you to get them. Put this all together and you have Sonic 1 special stages. They're f***ing awful. You never feel like you're in control, hell, you barely even have control once you're in the air. Most of the time, you'll find yourself in situations where you're stuck in super speed rotation mode and just hitting bumpers all around that will eventually swing you to your doom. Some of these labyrinths are pretty annoying to get through. Usually you'll come across arrows in former rings that will point you into the right direction. But sometimes you'll hit a fork in the road that has no indication where to go. And you better choose well or you'll end up ass first into the Red Bull. The last special stage is the worst one in my opinion. There's no walls around, only a giant square area with millions of colored diamonds protecting the last emerald. You'll have to play with the rotation a lot and pray to god not to be thrown off while it spins, otherwise it'll be an absolute bitch to go back to that spot. Not my favorite, but for the first attempt, not my favorite. Sonic 2 greatly improved upon the special stages of the first game by scrapping them entirely. The ring count is still present, but instead of reaching the goal, you'll just have to find one of those checkpoint posts while having 50 rings. A circle of stars will appear, you jump, and you're in. Right off the bat, this is a way better approach to tackle these stages. With Sonic 1, you could get only one emerald per act, but with Sonic 2, you can get multiple emeralds in a single act. And if you're good enough, you can even get all seven before finishing Emerald Hill Act 2. But what do we get with a jump into special stage? The classic half pipe. The objective is simple, collect a certain amount of rings before reaching the goal. It can be 80 rings, 90 rings, or hell, even 200. While running around in this semi-3D perspective, you'll come across two things, rings and mines. Get rings, avoid mines, simple. Again, these stages are a huge improvement. It's so well done, simple and to the point. It also plays to the fact that, you know, Sonic runs. Just give him a continuous road, he'll know what to do. The stages don't get too hard either, and they usually follow a path, but don't get too cocky though. Sometimes you'll need some trial and error to figure out these patterns. Sometimes you'll go up a slope not knowing if you're gonna be greeted by rings or pain. The last one is the most brutal one, but brutal in terms of this kind of stages. You need to get 190 rings, and if you messed up during the previous checkpoints, you're not gonna make it. It's divided in two parts, randomly place rings around and traps paradise. You mess up once here, and it's basically over. But overall, these stages are almost flawless, and it's not hard to see why they use them again and again in future entries. But please, don't bring tails. Just don't. Sonic City is the proof that Sonic had a rough transition to 2D. Just like in the first game, just nab those 50 rings and a giant ring will be the end. Jump in and you'll be transported to this strange Super Mario Kart-esque track with a bunch of interesting looking backdrops. Sometimes you'll be in a futuristic city, other times you'll be in an ancient civilization, or even in Sonic Colors Ultimate. And Gaigas. Swear to god, this game better not be based on Yuji Naka going to the wrong movie. The objective is not to find Chaos Emeralds, but Time Stones that would allow you to fix the time problem and get the good ending. But for this, you'll need to find and destroy these blue UFOs around. 
There are some hazards though, like little mechanical fangs on the floor, bumpers around, it's pretty challenging, especially while going full speed ahead. Hitting the UFOs requires some timing, uh, it's pretty simple to overshoot or undershoot a jump, causing you to waste more time trying to realign yourself again. Not a lot to say about this ones, the tracks aren't too different from each other, the biggest change really is the interesting backdrops. But they're in a league of their own, they're fun to play and really interesting. Even though I suck at them. Sonic 3 & Knuckles is my favorite game of all time, and a masterpiece of adventure platformer games, but let's cut to the chase before I start rambling about this game for 9 hours. Access to the special stages in this entry are very similar to Sonic 2, but with one main change, they're all hidden. Since Sonic 3 has more of an emphasis on exploration and adventure, entry to the special stages have to be earned by finding them, and nothing feels better than finding one of those giant rings around. This time we go back to giant rings, but forget about the 50 rings deal, you'll be fine. Find the coin from Sonic, jump in, and you'll be transported to... Hey, you. Blue Sphere, the only special stage that has his own spin-off game. These stages are incredible, it's absolutely impressive that they got this to run on a Genesis back then. The objective here is to, well, get blue spheres. Once you collect them on, they'll turn red, and by now you know that anything red in Sonic special stages means death. You'll find rings, bumpers, and yellow spheres that act as springs. The labyrinths you'll have to run across are colorful and fun to play. They feel kinda endless, but don't worry, you'll reach a point when the stages start repeating itself. It does get hectic though, because the longer you stay, the faster everything will go, making you harder to control and easier for you to miscalculate and go headfirst into a red ball. You think that nabbing those blue spheres and turning them red will lead to more danger, since you'll have to walk on eggshells trying to avoid those reds that you just created. But if you want to clear up some space, just grab the outer ones circling around. If you get those, all the remaining balls inside will turn into rings. Grabbing all the rings in the stage will give you a perfect bonus of 50,000 points. It's just points, but hell, after 25 years of playing this, I feel dirty if I don't finish a special stage without the perfect bonus. I truly believe these stages balance the difficulty perfectly. You can come across ones that are kind of a joke to beat, but then holy shit! The final special stage, especially. I don't know why, but I never figured out how to complete it how it was supposed to be completed. I played this game so much that I actually created my own way to finish in this stage. And let me tell you, this one being the hardest one of the bunch and being able to beat it in a really hard way is my biggest flex ever. Yeah, I play Blue Sphere, don't add me. Overall, these stages are fun and intense. You'll feel pretty accelerated when the game decides to speed things up. Getting that perfect bonus is always rewarding as hell, even though it's just points. Not only are they fun, but they also actually add to the overall plot and have nice little touches. Like the overall palette of the special stage being the same as the zone you're in. It's no wonder why these awesome stages return in Mania. Now let's take a look at the ones from the first Sonic 3D adventure. Sonic 3D Blast was the last hooray of Sonic on the Genesis. Mostly regarded as weird, slow and mediocre, Sonic 3D Blast was also the consolation prize for the ill-fated Saturn. Special stages on this one are kinda like Sonic 3K, you'll need to find them through exploration. But instead of poles or giant rings, the special stages here are given to you by Knuckles and Tails. However, they won't just allow you to enter, no, this time you'll have to pay tribute. Our good friend 50 Rings returns from this one, and makes me realize that having the 50 ring system from 1 and 2 and the exploration from 3 it's not a good mix. Just like in life itself, you gotta make a few choices. Once you pay your bill, you're taken to one of two places. Red Mountain or Windy Valley. Yeah, there are some similarities, especially with the tail stage. Objective is simple, very simple. Run along the line and jump when collecting rings. I mean, I keep saying it's simple, but it's basically the same concept every time. The only hazards are these little bombs that take away 10 rings if touched. They didn't really try with these ones. The stages are pretty boring and insultingly easy. The rings always come in in pairs of two and in long lines, so in a single sweep you'll be able to collect at least 15 rings. Sometimes you'll get so many rings that you'll complete the next objective before completing the one you're on. There's also no variety visually. Knuckle stages are always lava theme and tails will always be Windy Valley. But that's only half of the story, we also have Sonic 3D Blast. The Saturn version of this game also has special stages, but are quite different from the ones in the Genesis. Getting to them is the same as the 16-bit version, but the stages themselves are another story. Welcome back to the halfpipe, improved and in 3D. These stages are pretty fun. The same basics as Sonic 2's pipes are all here, but expanded. You have rings, you have bombs, but now you also have these little, uh, trick clocks? Clock tricks? That give you multiple rings if timed correctly. You also have springs that can take you to higher parts of the stage to nab more rings. You also have speed boosters, basically everything from SA1. Sad that they couldn't make the whole game like this. One issue I have though is the draw distance, it's not too clear. You'll see a lot of black before rings decide to appear and sometimes you'll miss them and can't catch them in time. 
But overall, these stages are fun. You have nice little animations when entering and completing them, they are colorful, and the music slaps hard. The black sheep of the family. Well, can you blame him? The poor guy didn't choose to be born a 32x game. Once again, we return to the giant ring at the end of the stage. Man, they really like that format. This time around, we're not collecting Chaos Emeralds or Time Stones, we're collecting... Fruit Loops. To get the, uh, Chaos Rings, we need to traverse the Hexagon. A 3D-ish style special stage where we get Blue Spheres, but not too many. Instead of collecting hundreds like we did in Sonic 3K, we need to collect a small amount. 4, 8, 12, and so on. Gravity is not a thing in this dojo, though. Everything is on the floor, which makes these stages pretty interesting to complete with all the free range of movement. The only way to bounce slightly backwards is to hit a bumper or one of these X's things. It's not all hexagonal, though. The stages do open up to reveal a lot more crazy sh** going on. Bombs, bumpers, friggin' boss sauce, they're all out to get you. But these stages are quite fun. Since you can't stop, you'll need to strategize when to get knocked back a bit. You're going to need that to traverse the land. The ability to walk everywhere makes these stages pretty fun to figure out, and while I don't really like Knuckles Chaotix, I can safely say that these stages are pretty dang good. With that, we cover the main classic games. Overall, I think Sonic 3K did it the best, but the half by idea is the most recognizable and the most reused as well. But now let's get the classics behind and move to a more advanced era. Sonic Advance was the first Sonic game on a Nintendo console. After being killed by the PS2, Sega quietly approached Nintendo asking for food. Luckily, Sonic Advance is pretty nice. Not the best of the advanced games in my opinions, but a good start with cool visuals, awesome sprite work and SPECIAL STAGES! After Sonic jumped into 3D, the special stages were kinda dropped in favor of having Super Sonic show up in the story to deliver the final blow to the bad guy. Advance 1, being a new 2D entry, retained and brought back some of the elements from the classics, one being the special stages, which you can enter by finding this absolute unit of a spring. Just, just look at that, makes you wanna jump on it. These are pretty well hidden. You'll have to run a few laps and explore around before getting a chance at these bad boys. Welcome to the Free Fall Pipe. Equipped with only a snowboard, here you'll free fall through space, I'm guessing to nab as many rings as possible. During this fall, you'll encounter rings, springs, trick rings, and... BOMBS! The graphics are nice for the GBA, and the objects look really clear. Too bad it sucks! The depth perception in these stages is just not good. Sometimes you'll think you're about to grab that full line of rings, only to realize that your ass is 3 inches away, making you miss a bunch! It feels pretty janky as well, you'll never feel like you can control yourself properly while free falling. And that trick ring is also pretty unforgiving. You go right through and at the exact same frame as you make contact with it, you'll have to hit the jump button to complete the trick and get extra rings. And about 8 times out of 10, you'll miss it because again, the depth perception, it's not your friend here. And those extra rings are sometimes what will make you lose the stage. It's a mess. Not the worst, but definitely a step down. Advance 2 is regarded as the best of the trilogy. Personally, I think 3 is better, but we'll get there. What's the biggest change between Advance 1 and 2? Well, while 1 was more of a platformer with Sonic in it, 2 threw all of that out in exchange for a sugar rush. The game is all about speed, there's not a moment to stop, it's exhilarating and it gets your blood pumping. So tell me, why do you hate us? To get the special stages in this game, you'll have to get out of your way to explore and go the different paths. You'll need to collect 7 special rings to earn a chance at the Emerald. But it's kinda hard to explore around when the game is designed to make you go as fast as f all the time! If there's one Sonic game that needed the special stage to be a giant ring at the end, it should have been this one. It sucks so much that it's so hard to get the emeralds because this game actually has the coolest cutscene ever after getting them. Vanilla gets kidnapped, Cream cries, Sonic goes super and whoosh. So awesome, and it's not just the intro, but also the ending. Ah, my heart. But what about the special stages? Are they worth it? I mean... What was the question? The stages are big 3D environments to run on and collect rings. There's boosters, springs, and nothing else. The objective is to collect a set number of rings within the time limit. The only thing standing in your way is... Yep, our favorite stalker from Sonic Adventure 1 is back. Man, I miss when Sega, you know, used their characters. The stages seem simple enough, but because you'll see a bunch of rings around, as you approach the high 200s, you'll kind of struggle to find any more rings around. Zero isn't too far behind, so if you're too slow to collect the rings, you'll get snatched. Not a bad set of special stages, only one main problem. Sonic Advance 2's way of getting to the f***ing stages is absolute dog sh**. 
Sonic Advance 3. This is the only SA3 Sega I will ever make. My favorite of the GBA trilogy, Advance 3 replaces Advance's 2 high-speed level design for a more open-ended one that requires a lot of exploration. And with the new body system moves, that task is pretty simple and fun to complete. This time around, you'll have to find 10 Chao around the stage. The game tells you the amount of Chao to find on each act as well, so that you won't waste time looking for a non-existent Chao. After collecting all 10, you'll need to find a key, which is pretty easy to find around the stage. Go back to the absolute unit of a spring and boom, you're in. Welcome to... whatever the hell this is. Okay, one second. One of my constant questions is, why are all these special stages so radically different? Lore-wise, I mean. And I think I've came with an answer. See, you go to these stages to get the emeralds, gems of mystical and infinite power. Maybe these worlds that we see in the special stages are one of infinite manifestations of the emeralds. Eh, maybe I'm reading too deep into it. This time you'll have the tornado to guide you. Same old, same old. Get rings, avoid bombs, get boosters, get multipliers, that's it. Kinda similar to Advance 1, as the depth is still kind of a problem, but it's improved. See, in SA1 you're in the middle of the screen, and that center point is where you'll have to stay to get the tricks and rings and everything potentially blocking you from seeing other rings. But here you'll be locked to a more downwards position, making it easier for you to see from far away without having your body block him. It's not the best, but at least the second best from the trilogy. If only we didn't have to jump hurdles in advance too, though. Overall, better than forces. Slap that on the cover. Sonic Heroes is the first game in the franchise that made me go... But it was also the first one in the mainline 3D games to bring back the special stages. They were absent in both adventure games, because they were mostly plot-related, but now they're back! The way you get there is the same way to get to the Chao Garden in SA2. Grab a special key and finish the level. Get hit once, you lose the key. Not too hard, it's a good choice for the 3D games. Once we complete the stage, we go to the pipe. Straight up pathway where you have to chase an emerald down, get near it and have it to win or let it cross the finish line and lose. You'll have a boost meter that'll fill up if you collect enough... Uh, bubbles? Balls? Balloons? Just grab them to do the fast. You also have some of your old friend bombs to avoid as well. Chase the emerald and that's it. To get the maximum amount of boost, you'll need to grab these start orbs or balls as they fill up the boost bar by a lot. These stages are good. I actually quite like them. Sometimes you'll need to manage your boost properly, otherwise you'll run out and end up seeing how the emerald gets farther and farther away. The design of the stage itself, it's just fun. Feels like it fits the Sonic franchise a lot. And since Sonic it's all about going fast and there's nothing cooler than running on the ceiling, I actually prefer these stages over the half pipes. But, for me, the one thing that makes this stage legendary is the music. But it's half and half. You see, Sonic Heroes has two acts for each zone, and you can only collect the emeralds on Act 2. In Act 1's special stage, you just collect shit. But I much prefer this one's over Act 2. Why? Because this song is so f***ing good, holy sh**! Sonic Rush is my favorite Sonic game on the DS, and introduced my favorite character of the entire series. Without going too into detail with the game, I'll only say that while I quite like it, it has some flaws. Countless bottomless bits, questionable enemy position, and such. But I still like it, dammit. Special stages are only accessible to Sonic, and the way to get there is to find one of these special generators. Grab onto them and boost it up until you get shot into another dimension. Hey old friend, the halfpipe is back, with all of the stuff that you know and love. Get rings, about sh you know the drill. There's also these trick rings that require you to press the numbers in the correct order to nab extra rings. These stages aren't too crazy, but what makes them great is the control. These stages are played with the DS's touchscreen, and the movement is clean and quick. If you flick the stylus 80 miles per hour, the character will also move 80 miles per hour. It's such a precise method of control, and it just feels so right. In later stages, you come across precise as hell sections where the controller really shines. Sometimes they're a bit too quick and you might end up getting hit, but these are easily overcome with a bit of practice. Overall, okay stages with incredible control. Our second visit to the Solar Mission was pretty nice. The design of this setting is not as Sonic as Gas in Rush 1. That's mostly because this game takes place in the Soul Dimension, and in a set of islands around, surrounded by too much water. The water is the main gimmick of this game. To get to the main stages, you'll need to sail to them by marking the specific area with the stylus. This is also how you find the special stages. But while the uncharted islands are kinda noticeable, the special stages aren't. So most of the times you'll just have to char to a random destination and hope that you'll find... Johnny! This little robot is the main antagonist's right-hand man. This guy brands himself as the fastest thing alive, so of course you'll have to challenge that title. Racing this guy is... I don't like it. The controls have the same precision as Sonic Rush 1, but it just feels like Johnny straight up cheats. 
Sometimes you'll be going top speed with your boost. Something that you kind of have to do to get ahead because if he gets a head start, it'll be hard as hell to catch up to him. You get more boost by collecting more rings, which kind of slows you down when you have to collect rings and avoid terrain, bombs and attacks, and try to beat this guy in a race. I'm not gonna lie, I hated these. The way to get to them and to beat them. I mean, I did it, but God, I kind of wanted to eat my console right after. We're jumping ahead to take a look at, for now, the latest set of special stages. Mania brings everything together. The 3D terrains from CD and Advance 2, the Chase the Emerald down from Heroes, the models from 3D Blast, the UFOs, everything put into a blender to create the perfect set of special stages. These are just plain fun. Just chase the UFO holding the Emerald down. To get the spaceship, you'll need to collect blue spheres that increase your speed, but watch out, you also have to collect rings to keep up with the race. And watch out for those mines. These are perfect, just the best of the bunch, the balance is just right, the controller is responsive and precise until you speed things up. Then controlling your character becomes a challenge. Nothing feels more rewarding than struggling in one of these stages for a few minutes and finally nailing the damn emerald. The Mania guys just did everything right with this one. So those are the special stages from the games I played. I know I'm missing a few like 3DS's Lost Worlds, Game Gear games and Sonic 4, but that would already make this long video even longer, and there's really not much to say about them. Except maybe Lost Worlds, but hey, can't say much about something I never played. Supersonic is a great concept and a big reward after getting those pesky emeralds, and I kinda feel like their place was kinda overshadowed by having the emeralds usable only during the ending, but with the last 10 years at least, we've seen the return of the old Supersonic to normal stages. Which I think we needed. Not every Sonic game has to end with Supersonic Battle as the full ending, but maybe having them as a secret ending, rewarding you for collecting all the emeralds like Sonic 3 did, feels like the right way to handle this. But screw that, let's make that DLC!